My name is Jonathan, and uh, I've been I've been struggling with addiction for about 22 years now, and it's been it's been a real battle. It's been it's been really hard on me. It's been I've I've faked my way through most of my adult life because I didn't want anybody to know. I was ashamed of myself. I was ashamed of what I was doing. I was ashamed of of let, uh, not allowing God to be in my heart for so long. I was saved. And April 3rd, 1993, and I have been backslid for most of my adult life. And it was it was really hard for me to realize that I really needed help. I really needed it. I couldn't do it on my own. I thought I could. I thought I had it under control. I guess that's why I was a functioning addict for so long. But I, I, I did. I hit it for the most part. And when it finally was enough and I couldn't take it anymore, I finally reached out and I asked somebody for help. And the love that I received was overwhelming. I've never felt love that way in my whole life. Like, I've never felt that in, I mean, anywhere. I've never, these people, these guys don't know me from nobody. And they What, what guys are you talking about? The guys at this this farm, this this, this place of recovery. And, and Who did you reach out to for help? A friend of mine from where I'm from. I'm from uh, Rockingham County, North Carolina, Eden. And um, I was, I had a big, big fight with my girl and we was having some financial problems and we were about to get kicked out. Her parents were about to take our kids and I mean, we were struggling. The kids were eating ramen noodles so me and my girl could not be sick. And sick from what? From uh, opiates, mostly pain pills. What kind? And, uh, pot like Percocets, it didn't matter, Roxy's, Hydrocodone, anything I could get my hands on that wouldn't make me feel sick. And it didn't even get me high anymore. It just, it made me feel like that was the only way I could be normal just to get out of bed every day. And like I said, I was a functioning addict for a long time. I got up and went to work for the most part and and did what I had to do as far as that, but it was mostly just to feed my addiction. And everything else was on the back burner in my life. My family, my, my girl, my kids, everybody. My own parents, I've spoke to them twice in, in a year, year and a half, something like that. And it was just, it's been a road, rough, rough road. And when I reached out, it was within minutes Within minutes, I heard of this place, and I didn't know places like this existed. I thought it was all little 28-day programs that I've been through several times in my life that, to me, just they got, got us physically clean, but it didn't help with my soul. It didn't help with my, with my problems, my character defects that I've learned here. I'm really good at keeping things from people and putting on that smile. I can put on a smile and I can make anybody laugh, but I'm always dying inside. I have been. It's just been a it's been a, it's been a rough road for me. I lost my baby brother a year ago to heroin March, I think it was March 13th. And he had died already four or five times from it. And it finally, it took his life. He was sitting in the back seat of my mom and dad's truck and he took his last breath. And as he was dying, he told my dad, he said, I'm sorry. and I can't imagine what's going through their mind, what was going through their mind at the time. And we didn't have a good relationship growing up. We fought all the time. And so it was, it was really hard on me. And I think that was when I started to realize that I didn't want to die. I didn't want, I didn't want my kids to grow up without a father. I didn't want them. I mean, I didn't, I didn't want that. I only get one life and, and it just, it wasn't, wasn't what I wanted, but it still took me almost a whole nother year to finally realize that this is what I needed to do and actually ask somebody for help. And when I found this place, they told me a little bit about it. I got on the phone with Jimbo and I felt like this is a guy that, that's been through it. He knows and, and I could learn a lot from him. And, and, and restore my faith and my faith in myself, my faith in the Lord and my faith in humanity because I just felt like there was nothing else for me. It was to get high, go to work, come home, get high again. And that's, it was a vicious, vicious cycle. And it, it really, it's really opened my eyes being here. I've been here a week and I'm clean and sober now and I'm starting to become clear headed again and I see I see the damage that I've caused everybody and the damage that I've caused myself. And I don't want I don't want to live that way anymore.